Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. Our guest today is Sean McGinnis, General Manager of Evergard Roofing and Solar. They've earned a reputation for being Albuquerque's most trusted source for residential, commercial, and industrial roofing. For those looking to save money on utility bills, look to Evergard Solar Solutions. I started the interview by asking Sean about his company. Evergard Roofing is a local family-owned company. We're, we're based out of Albuquerque in Mexico. We've been serving the state of New Mexico since 2001. Uh, we started mainly as an industrial and commercial roofer, and in the past um, decade, we've also moved into the residential roofing service market with um, great success. And in 2008, we expanded into the solar industry with our, our sister company, Evergard Solar, and we've been providing clean, renewable energy to New Mexicans ever, ever since then. So we've, we've been established in the area. We're, we're fairly well-known, good word of mouth and, and good reputation. You know, I moved to the Albuquerque area from uh, New Jersey six years ago and, and had previous, previously been in Albuquerque about 11, 12 years prior to that, but came with a, a construction background. I managed a, a swimming pool construction company as well as worked for solar companies back east and uh, primarily from a, an engineering standpoint, working with um, you know site surveyors and things like that for a, a national company that was in existence at the time. If a person puts the solar panels on the roof, let's say, do, do they end up not having to pay for electricity or how does that work? So with solar... Okay. Again, you can you can completely offset your electrical usage, meaning you can produce enough solar electricity to not get charged for your consumption, which is typically done through a utilities net metering program, and I'll come back to that in, in a moment. Um, however, many utilities are still going to charge you a customer fee and uh, their customer charges on top of your kilowatt per hour charges. So at least here in Albuquerque, our case, that charge may be six, eight, ten dollars a month to be connected to the grid still. So essentially a grid tied solar system is is using the electrical grid like a battery, right? So you produce a bunch of solar energy in a day and what you don't consume feeds back into the grid. Come nighttime that solar system isn't producing, so you're pulling energy back from the grid. So the goal is, you know, if you produce enough solar electricity during the daytime hours to offset what you pull back from the grid at night, you're not going to be charged a, a per kilowatt hour charge, in essence, being you produce more energy than you used. And in, inversely, if you don't produce enough solar energy from your system to offset what you pull from the grid, then typically you only have to pay the difference of what you didn't produce, okay? And that's, that's where that, that net metering program, which most utilities um, across the country are utilizing. It does depend on the utility, uh, the answer to that question. And so for most homeowners going solar, you know, they can typically offset 100% of their, their consumption and only pay a small fee to the utility, you know, in... in regards to like a customer service charge. So does it raise my property values then? It does. And in, in not only our opinion, but in the realtor's opinions in the area, we've gone to uh, several realtor group meetings here and, and they all seem in unison on that. Years back, realtors and owners alike uh, thought it would reduce property value or were worried about the aesthetics. There was kind of that time, maybe going a decade back. But the truth, the, the truth, which is now clear and evident in the marketplace, at least, does add retail value to the home when you own the solar system. Okay, now leasing your solar can be somewhat problematic. Okay, it's not real property at, at that point. So when selling your home, there's some contractual obligations and things 
that can make that difficult. But actually owning the solar system not only adds property value to the home, being its real property, but homes with solar are increasingly easier to sell than homes without it, at least in, in our market here in Albuquerque. The monthly savings on your electric bill, as well as the perk of, once again, being clean, renewable energy, make these solar homes more sought after, typically, by new and current home buyers. And what we're seeing trending is that the homes with solar are increasingly easier and faster to sell compared to homes without it. You know, another factor that that is perhaps leading to that is um, solar systems, um, you may or may not have noticed, uh, they're getting a more aesthetically pleasing and um, the more efficient they get and the higher wattage it allows you for a smaller system so they can often be hidden so even though aesthetics may may play into it with a certain type of clientele the overall trend is uh, people are seeking homes with solar already installed on it they're selling faster and they're selling for higher values well let's flip over to some roofing questions uh How do I know if my roof needs replacement? Well, there could be a few things. I mean, you might be able just to, you know, kind of one of the obvious things is it's looking pretty beat up and (laughs) and a little rough around the edges. But, um, you know, obviously if you're experiencing leaking, perhaps there's wind blow off of the roofing material itself. Those are, those are pretty good indicators that the system's beginning to, to fail you know, weather and, and UV rays just beat up the roofs over, over the years and oftentimes the materials just start getting brittle. We always suggest if you're seeing any of those signs or it's just generally looking old, uh, leaks, blow off, when in doubt, just call a roofer out. Are asphalt shingles uh, the most popular in Albuquerque? For pitched roofs, yes. Being in the Southwest and um, there, there's a lot of flat roofs here as well. So there, there's different materials used between flat roofs and a pitched roof. But on pitched roofs, absolutely. Um, they're right up there. Um, you know, we also see a lot of metal roofing here. But people tend to go with shingles. You know, they carry a, a, a great fire rating. They're, they're built to last, you know, if they're installed right. And with, with a shingle system, you can add in some great ventilation options that help uh, prolong the life of the roof and uh, also help to cool the home and make the home more energy efficient. For each uh, option, how long does a roof last? It's all going to depend, obviously, like you mentioned, on, on the type of roofing system, quality and materials installed. Ventilation, which I just mentioned, is, is a huge factor in this. Proper ventilation, both intake and exhaust ventilation, is crucial for most roofing systems to perform properly. So taking, we'll take a shingle roof system, for example. When properly ventilated and installed with premium materials, a shingle roof can last 40 to 50 years. Um, some installers like us at EverGuard, we're able to provide a manufacturer warranty for that time period. We have up to a 50-year warranty. For a flat roof, what we found that works out really well here in Southwest is a a, uh, TPO roof, which is a membrane roof. If installed properly, um, right techniques, proper ventilation, things like that, you know, those roofing systems can last 30 years plus. You know, a metal roof will typically last as long as the finish does. With each option, asphalt, metal, and flat roof, what's the cost per square foot? Air conditioning unit, heating unit, solar or wall flashing, all those things are going to take more time to work around. So that's going to to increase the cost, rough cost probably for a shingle. You know, it could be between five to seven dollars a square foot. Metal again, standing seam is is going to be a little bit more than that. Maybe if it's a standard R panel, it's going to fall within the range of the um, uh, of the shingles there. Flat roofing, um, you can get away with some cheaper things like coatings, mod modified bitumen type rolled roofing on a flat roof, which we tend not to do. There's also a roofing system that's um, was used to be more common here, a tar and gravel roofing system. Um, you know, those are some of your cheap op- options, but, you know, it may only last 10, 15, possibly 20 years if, if you take the time to maintain it properly. But a, a TPO roof, you know, depending on type of application, 
you know, if you have to do a full tear off of the existing material, code here only allows for two roofing layers. Uh, the the pricing can can drastically change, and uh, that same goes for the shingle too. You know, if you're doing tear off, that's going to increase cost. But for for TPO, you can probably count on seven to nine dollars a square foot. Our thanks to Sean McGinnis from Evergard Roofing and Solar in Albuquerque. They can be reached at 505-821-9543. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.